Ladies and gentlemen, there's a serious and life-threatening epidemic going on in our great schools. It has the power to completely destroy a young man's education, to throw the entire school day off track, compromising the education of millions. I'm referring, of course, to young women's exposed shoulders, thighs, tight, revealing yoga pants. This injustice is sweeping our nation, and it needs to be stopped. coming up on that time of the year again. Dress codes have been a point of controversy for the last few years, and I think rightfully so. At Staten Island High School, administrators gave nearly 200 female students detention for wearing shorts in the sweltering heat of summer. Distracting, they said. A middle school in California held a mandatory assembly for girls only and pulled them out of class to tell them they can't wear yoga pants or leggings. Distracting, they said. A kindergarten student in Georgia was changed without her mother's notification or permission because her skirt was too short. Distracting. So so distracting. Who exactly is distracted by a kindergartner's squirt? According to hundreds of schools in the US, it's boys and perhaps even male faculty. That's uncomfortable. Students who are coming forward with these stories often come with tales of inappropriate comments from the administration like, you shouldn't be showing off your curves. Don't you want a husband someday? The school's dress code violators are skanks. Boys are bad, and that kind of shirt is going to cause them to misbehave. OK, that makes sense. Wait, no it doesn't. To be clear, the problem with this trend is not that there are guidelines for dress. We have guidelines for work and weddings and interviews and outdoor activities and schools. Guidelines themselves aren't the problem. The problem is when these codes target girls specifically because of the mentality that their bodies are sexual and therefore distracting. So here are five reasons why dress code double standards are kind of definitely sexist. Number one, it tells girls, many of whom are children, that their bodies are inherently sexual. It tells her she's not entitled to human decency and respect if her skin is showing, which is slut shaming, but it's also objectifying. It tells girls that their bodies are more sexual than boys. She's the object, he is the subject, the consumer. Girls come to see their bodies through the lens of uncontrollable male desire instead of her own wants and her own needs. This is a process called self objectification, and it has been linked quadrillions of times by the APA to depression, mental health issues, and eating disorders. Number two, it tells boys, many of whom are children, I might add, that girls' bodies are inherently sexual regardless of context. It teaches boys that it's acceptable to disrespect girls and misbehave if they can see her skin. Instead of teaching boys that they're responsible for their own actions, it teaches them that girls are responsible for them. This is an extraordinarily dangerous lesson that we teach boys. It's part of how we set the stage for harassment, sexual assault, and victim blaming. Number three, these dress codes are often accompanied by a nice heaping spoon of body shame because girls don't have enough of that. Administrators are subjecting them to degrading screenings, complete with comments like like, you know, not all dresses look good on certain body types. Number four, administrators are punishing girls with detention, public humiliation, expulsion, mandatory assemblies. What's the real distraction here? Title IX prohibits sex-based discrimination and hostility at school. These accommodations for boys cannot legally come at the expense of girls' education. Number five, the thing that seems to be flying over all these administrators' heads, the reality of middle school and high school is this, everybody is distracted. Everybody's bodies are changing, crushes, it's all new, it's all exciting, and it is not just boys. Girls have sexual feelings too. I know, right? Mind blowing. Why is it always girls that are the problem? All those feelings, excitement, distraction is just as real for girls as it is for boys, even though we try to pretend that girls don't have a sexuality of their own. We need to teach girls and boys healthy and respectful ways to deal with their feelings so that they can function and have a strong foundation at work, school, and in relationships in the future. This is my common sense announcement of the day. Some have raised concerns about the pressures on girls to show their skin in the first place. While many of the violations that I reviewed are hardly risque, it's totally true that we are bombarded with hypersexualized images of women and we do feel those pressures. But, big but, not in an objectifying way, that problem is not combated by reinforcing our status as sex objects in the dress code. Hypersexualization can be combated by empowering girls to feel comfortable in their own skin, addressing the pressures we feel and making spaces to talk about them, and by encouraging girls to wear whatever they feel happy and comfortable in, to dress for themselves and nobody else. 
for all my middle school and high school babes out there. Many of you have emailed me that this stuff is going on at your school. Some of you sent me pictures of the double standards, things that guys are getting away with while you're getting sent home from school. I wanna encourage you to speak up. Protest, contact your local paper, blog about it, like hashtag I'm more than a distraction. Several of you launched poster campaigns at your school, which is amazing. You deserve equal treatment and equal access to education. You deserve a learning environment that is free of the distractions of your sexist administrators. So as warmer weather makes its way over, keep calm and protest on. I love you babes, I'll see you as soon as I have time to make another video. Mwah. Except your mom, oh. What?